Welcome to day 308. Um, we are in uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again and talking about the, the death of Christ. So I really want to get to um, some really cool things that there are today. I'll probably say it just a little bit too much. Sorry, let me adjust this. Probably say it too much, but it is the Bible. It's the Word of God, and it's such a cool thing. And there are some cool things. So let's get into it. Matthew 27, 38 says, Two revolutionaries were crucified with him one on his right and one on his left, okay? So um, I wanted to just say that, isn't it interesting that Jesus went at the second coming or at the great white throne judgment, that he gathers all the people together and he separates uh, the sheep from the goats on the right and on his left. In Luke 23, Verse 40, he says, but the other criminal protested because the first criminal was making fun. The other criminal said, don't you fear God even when you have, this, have been sentenced to die? And then he goes on and says, we deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Stop there for a second. So, Good on the right, bad on the left. What is good on the right isn't necessarily innocent. Isn't innocent. Well, none of us are innocent. And the point is, they were two criminals, both on either side of Christ. One of them had a heart for doing what is right, or at least a broken spirit to the point where he realized he had done wrong. The other one was continually mocking Christ. And the other, the, the other one said, you know, we've done wrong. And then he says this. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The mocking criminal didn't say anything like that. But the broken spirited person, the man said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And here's the perfect picture of what it's like to accept Christ and be forgiven. You're guilty. You have a change of heart. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. So that should put it to rest that you should you can be forgiven. He didn't do anything to be forgiven. That guy, that, he was a criminal. And he was dying. There was no time left for him to do something to be forgiven. He had a, uh, a broken spirit and a, and a renewed sense of what needed to be done. Uh, and that's what God has been looking for. And that's what we've been saying all along through the Bible. Um, the other part of this put to rest that uh, um, when you die, you are in heaven. End of story. Jesus said you're going to be in paradise today. Okay, his body is in the ground, but he his soul is going to be in paradise. There's no question. Okay, um, now the next the last part of what I want to talk about, there's four things and it all goes together. So I'm trying to figure out what the best thing to do, read this. So I'm, I think I'll go to Matthew. So Matthew's always a good one. Uh, I'll probably end up in John at the end here for the last of the, the, the next four points. So let's start in Matthew 27. Um, verse... 50. Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two. From top to bottom, the earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs were opened. The bodies of many, it doesn't say all the people in the tombs. It says the, the tombs, the bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. That's not the rapture. This happened, uh, it'll, it'll say when it happened here in a minute. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the, and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the son of God. Oh, there's a whole bunch here. But let's talk about the Roman officers or the Roman officer who realized that Jesus was the Son of God. There was still time for him. There won't be time 
later. Now is the time uh, to give your life to Christ and realize that you know He's the trump card. He's the uh, He's the wild card. He's the He's the get out of jail free card. He is what we all want, and people just deny it because they there's this inherent thought of earning your way into heaven. You can't earn your way into heaven. There is nothing you can do. There's nothing the criminal could do. He was out of time. There's nothing he could do. But since you are alive and well, you can do good things, but those good things don't get you to heaven. But good things build your treasure in heaven. And that's what we should be doing. Um, the curtain torn in two, that's the curtain that we talked about way back in Exodus about the colors and the beautiful, majestic things, the way they made it. Well, it was torn in two at that point in time. The darkness, uh, it was dark from noon to three. That never happens. That's a crazy thing. You think about this. When God does something, he goes big. And the last thing I want to talk about, we're going to reference these in John 19, 32 through 33. Um... Let me turn the page back here. 32 to 33, it says this. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But the, when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. Stop. Okay, so uh, medical doctors have said, yes, when someone's dead and they start to bloat and they fill with water, that's what was happening. So there's evidence of the fact that Jesus was dead. So you might as well put that to rest. Um, and so let's talk about the broken bones. In Exodus 12, 46, Exodus 12, see if you can get there faster than me. Exodus 12, 46 says, yeah, 46. Each Passover... Each Passover lamb must be eaten in one house. Do not carry any of its meat outside and do not break any of its bones. Okay. Um, go to Numbers 9.12, which is real quick after Leviticus. Numbers 9.12. And it says kind of the same type of thing. They must not leave any of the lamb until the next morning. That's why Jesus died that day. They must not break any of its bones. Okay, and then Psalm 34, 20. Psalm 34, 20. Sorry, I don't have these marked. 34, 20, it says this. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous, not one of them is broken. Okay, so no bones being broken on Christ. Uh, he wasn't left over for the next day. Um, and then three days later, he rose from the grave. What a great thing. And I can't wait to talk about other things that happened during this time. But we are now at the death of Christ, and we're moving forward, getting into lots of lots of really cool things, and we only have two months to do it. So hang on, get your notes ready, and be ready to write a lot, because there's some really cool stuff coming. That's your day 308. I'll see you tomorrow.